Monday in Simsville, South Carolina, and it's been a, a great weekend. We've uh, heard some good messages preached. We had a chance to share with literally hundreds of children in a fall festival and sharing the gospel through a beach ball. And uh, now it's uh, getting ready for presidential debate. And uh, I want to talk about that at the end of this video because uh, we're talking about Jesus on prayer. And uh, we've looked at 16 prayers that Jesus prayed. Some we had to speculate what he might have prayed. But uh, the majority of his prayers were intercessory prayers. And uh, the secondary was thanksgiving. Tonight we're going to start our series on what did he teach about prayer. Again, looking at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in that order. There are five, uh, sorry, there are six teachings in Matthew. There are three teachings in Mark, three teachings in Luke, and four in John. A total of 16 sections where Jesus taught about prayer, had words to tell us about how we should pray. Of course, the most famous uh, being Matthew 6, uh, as he gave us the uh, model prayer, if you will. The first one that we want to look at tonight is Matthew 5.44, and that's exactly the one that I want to deal with when it comes towards the presidential debates uh, tonight and uh, for the candidates that are running for the office of president. In Matthew 5.44 it says, Pray for your enemies and those that persecute you. Now, I'm not thrilled with my choices on the presidential election. There are four choices. There are two independent uh, candidates, but uh, there are two primary candidates. I'm not thrilled with any of the four choices. I'm probably least happy about this particular election potential than any that have come before it. Why is that? Well, because I don't think either one of the candidates uh, show the real Christian qualities that I'd like to see in a president. And uh, it's kind of worrisome to me that uh, either one would get elected, but uh, I have picked one of the lesser of the two evils, and probably most of you know who that is. But nevertheless, uh, I think we need to pray tonight. Uh, and this is a difficult prayer, because we say pray for your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. We need to pray that God's will would be done. Now, I say that with a great deal of reservation because many times in history, the people wanted something that wasn't good for them, and God gave it to them. Regardless of which candidate we want, we think that we'll do the best job. It may well be that whatever candidate is elected is going to bring about changes that will bring judgment on America. I think that's very possible with either candidate, and I think that God has had about enough of the way America has been acting, uh, the immorality, uh, the total heathenism, if you will, the love of money, greed, all of those things. Uh, we deserve what we get, and we may get what we don't want in either of the candidates. The second uh, passage of Scripture that I want to look at tonight is Matthew 6 beginning at verse 5 and going through verse 15. It's the model prayer. It's not a route prayer, a rote prayer. Uh, my daughter keeps saying it's not route, it's rote. Uh, it's not a prayer that's uh, just to be repeated over and over again. It's the content of prayer uh, that Jesus was teaching his disciples, not pray this prayer. But it's really quite interesting when you break it down because there are five factors uh, that he points out in preparation for prayer. He says, uh, be sure that uh, when you pray, you don't pray to be seen or to be heard. That is, the prayer is really between you and God. That doesn't mean you can't have a public prayer in a church service, but he's just saying don't don't pray to impress man. Don't pray for uh, the admiration of man because you're 
uh, more holy than somebody else. But uh, be sure that uh, your, your prayer is in earnest from your heart to God. Second, he says, uh, go into your inner room. Now, again, uh, I don't think we always have to pray in secret uh, in an inner room. But he says there's some value in that. Third, he says, uh, pray to the Father. And pray to God the Father and do it in secret. Then he says, don't pray with vain repetition. Don't just keep praying the same thing over and over again without examining what your heart really feels. Uh, don't pray uh, a prayer that just continues to be exactly the same prayer. You know, Father, help all the poor people in the world. You know, feed the hungry, whatever. Uh, and, and don't just keep repeating the same phrases just because it's easy. So not vain repetition. And then he says, and not for the length of the prayer. Uh, a lot of people think that a prayer is only good if it's a long prayer. And I'd recommend you take a look at Elijah's prayer on Mount Carmel if you think a long prayer is necessary. But, but don't worry about the length of the prayer. And then he kind of explains that. He says, because your father already knows before you ask. Now, he wants us to pray, but don't don't forget he knows our hearts and he knows what we're going to ask for even before we ask it. So we have five points here in this model prayer, if you will, uh, that are just in preparation for praying. Then there are 10 points, total of 16 points here, uh, excuse me, 15 points here. Uh, there, are, there are 10 things that he tells us to do. He tells us that we should have petition, um, but... Let's take them one at a time as you can see them in this model prayer. First, he says, we pray for our relationship. We have a heavenly father. Now, some of you may not have had a good father, uh, but he's assuming that we understand what a good father is and the father loves his children and wants only the best for them. And so he says, understand the relationship that you have with God. Then he says, we understand the position that the father is in. He's in heaven. Uh, he is exalted already. He's already in heaven, and so we're praying to a heavenly Father. And then he says, praise. Uh, he says, hallowed be thy name. And uh, we'll find that praise is repeated at the very end of the prayer model as well. But he says then to pray for his kingdom to come. And friends, we may be at that point uh, with Russia ra rattling the nuclear weapon arsenal with Iran rattling the nuclear weapon arsenal, with North Korea rattling the nuclear weapon arsenal, and with America seeming also be willing to use tactical nuclear weapons if necessary. We are very close to the end. Uh, the signs of the times in Scripture are everywhere, and certainly the potential of poisoning a third of the Earth's water and burning up a third of the earth is, is becoming more and more realistic as we think about these nuclear weapons and getting into the wrong hands and somebody pulling the trigger when they shouldn't have. So, but it says, your kingdom come, and we ought to be ready for that. We ought to be ready for his coming tonight. We ought to be ready for his coming tomorrow because we are very close to the end times. And then he tells us to pray for his will. Not our will, but his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And whether that's Hillary or Donald, uh, or whether it's one of the other two independent candidates, we need to pray for his will to be done and accept whatever his will is, even if it's the beginning of judgment on America. Then he says that we can make our petitions, our petitions for our needs, not all of our wants, but our needs. He says, give us this day our daily bread. And then he tells us to confess our sins. Forgive us of our sins. And he, we want him to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But he goes on and says, as we forgive those who sin against us, that's forgiveness. So we have confession and forgiveness in that same section. And it's very, very important. It says, because if we want to be forgiven, we need to forgive those who have trespassed against us. Then he uh, includes a prayer in the prayer part uh, of guidance. 
lead us not into temptation, uh, lead us in a, a correct righteous path. And when we get off the path, deliver us from evil, get us back on the right path. And finally it ends in that praise uh, that we know that his kingdom and his glory are forever and ever. Two prayers, uh, instructions on prayer rather. Uh, one, to pray for our enemies and those that persecute us. That's hard to do. It's hard to pray for your enemies. I know that. And then he tells us how to pray. Uh, get prepared for prayer, the first five points in Matthew 6, 5 through 15. And then what the content of our prayer should be, uh, covering all of these bases uh, is the way we should pray. That's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day. Remember to watch the debate and pick your candidate according to what you think uh, will hold up the closest to God's standard for America. We only have four choices. They're not good choices and none of them seem to represent all of the things that God would want for America. But uh, you watch the debate and let God and the Holy Spirit guide you and who you should vote for. That's your thought for the day. God bless you.